station. This is Time Magazine. How do you hear me? And we have you loud and clear, Jonathan. Great to talk to you today. How do you hear me? Uh, Commander Kelly, great to talk with you. Uh, congratulations on uh, both of you on reaching your halfway mark in your mission. Uh, time's really going fast for us down here, but uh, how about you? Is it flying by or standing still? You know, I think, uh, you know, it's a tough question. I think it depends on, uh, you know, how, how you look at it. Um, you know, we had uh, three new crew members get up here fairly, what I would consider fairly recently, um, you know, about 60 days ago, uh, Chell, Kimia, and Oleg. And, uh, you know, when I, when I think back to, to when they got here, you know, it seems like that amount of time has gone by quickly. However, when I think back to March and the uh, launch, that seems like almost an eternity ago. And then with, uh, you know, the same amount of time in, in front of us, I would say probably time has not gone by too quickly. And, uh, you know, Misha will have to answer for himself. And Misha, did you have uh, anything to add? Uh, Mikhail, is there anything to add? Is time flying fast or is it stopped on the station? For me, time on the station like a rubber. It's much, much longer than uh, in the Earth. But I am glad I'm here with Scott, my friend, and a very great crew member. And uh, I am sure uh, all the tasks will be performed okay, and we will uh, do our mission very well. Uh, I think everything will be okay. Thank you for your good question. And could each of you tell us about a day or a moment that uh, you were on the station and you had some inclination, you had some wish or desire to be back on Earth? А не могли бы каждый из вас рассказать о моменте или дне, когда вы находились на станции, а вам хотелось быть на Земле? You know, I I wouldn't say there's a uh, you know a particular uh, day. But there certainly have been days, you know, and I think most of them involve, uh, you know, my kids and wanting to be there for them, and be there, um, you know, present uh, to help them with, with things that they need or just to spend time with them. Um, you know, I, you know, there are a lot of people on Earth that I, I, I think might, might want me there. But, uh, you know, in the case of your children, I think they need you there. And uh, so there, there have been those moments for me. Of course, I'd like to go to Earth, and uh, sometimes uh, I see the dream. Uh, I have a vacation in Earth, and uh, each time I forgot uh, too late uh, to next uh, <laughs> next shuttle to to the space station. But it's a dream, and uh, of course I am repeat. Uh, I'd like go to Earth, but uh, in exactly in scheduled time, we have to perform our uh, mission. Perfect. And what has been the, the biggest challenge so far? А что было самым сложным для вас за эти шесть месяцев? Yeah, you know that's a it's a that's a tough uh, tough question. You know the the whole thing, uh, being up here, working up here, being up here every day um, for the last I don't know how many days we've been here over a hundred and seventy is, uh, you know, challenging because, um, you know, the work we do takes a lot of concentration. There's, it's very detail-oriented. It's, uh, you know, stuff that, you know, some of it has some pretty significant consequences to, uh, you know, very expensive hardware or our own personal safety. So it's, uh, you know, a level of, of concentration and, uh, you know, a work ethic, attention to detail, like I said, that you just need to maintain continuously or try your best to maintain that continuous, continuously. And that, uh, you know, it, uh, that takes a lot of effort and it, uh, you know, is, can be fatiguing. So I think, you know, for me, the hardest thing is, is been trying to manage that, uh, you know, that level of, of fatigue. So, 
when I get to the end of this, I have uh, you know as much in the in the tank as I did in the beginning, or or at least enough to uh, to do my job effectively. Thanks, Scott. Uh, Mikhail, do you have anything to add? Mikhail, хотели бы вы что-нибудь добавить? I agree with Scott. Nothing else. Uh, and I guess just to pivot slightly, what has been the, the most interesting moment or experience you've had up there so far? I mean, there's been, uh, you know, some cargo delays. Uh, you know, we had a shelter in place event, but, uh, you know, you guys are living and eating and uh, sleeping there 24-7. Uh, for you, what stands out in your mind as uh, something very memorable? Не могли бы вы, пожалуйста, рассказать о каком-нибудь моменте, который запомнился больше всего? Это случай с кораблями посещения или тот момент, когда вы укрывались в корабле «Союз». Вы находитесь на станции 24 часа в сутки, 7 дней в неделю. Но что запомнилось больше всего? You know, there are certainly a lot of those memorable moments. Um, you know, certainly launching into space and arriving on the space station is one of them. Um, you know, but there have been many others. You know, when you see new people come on board the space station, in some cases, you know, in the in the case of Chell, Kimmy, and Oleg, those guys were, you know, just on Earth a few hours ago, and two of them had never been in space before. And seeing their faces come through the hatch, it's, uh, you know, it's exciting for them, and it's very exciting for us to see, see them and kind of experience, you know, what they're experiencing, you know, through their eyes or, or you know, watching them experience and what, what Misha and I have done previously on our on our first flights, um, in my case, a pretty t long time ago. Um, you know, so those kind of like personal experiences are, are memorable. Um, but we've done a lot of uh, activities while I've been up here, a lot of science. You know, the rodent uh, research activities that we did was very, very complicated. Uh, a lot of moving parts, no pun intended. Um, and, uh, you know the results were fantastic there's a lot of other other science you know we're doing 400 different science experiments while i'm here for a year even this morning we were just doing this uh this fluid shifts experiment that uses this russian uh, chibis device that puts negative pressure on our bodies to to move the blood out of our heads to you know possibly determine what the issues are with uh you know effects on our vision while we're up here and and other impacts that the uh microgravity environment has uh, has on our physiology but uh, you know we moved one of the modules while we were up here we had a, a SpaceX arrive an HTV we had some <clears throat> challenges with some cargo vehicles that although they never made it it's certainly uh, you know I wouldn't call it a highlight but it's definitely something that uh, <clears throat> is uh, you know uh, significant to the the, the mission um, and, uh, you know, those are the kind of things I remember, but, but I think mostly it's the personal experiences. Uh, hi, this is a question for Mikhail. Um, uh, здравствуйте, Mikhail Borisovich. У нас вопрос. Я понимаю, что вы живете на русском модуле, и нам было бы очень интересно узнать, как это изменилось за последние шесть месяцев, как часто вы видитесь с Котом и с другими членами экипажа, которые живут на российском модуле. И если вы могли бы ответить по-русски, это было бы замечательно. Can you please answer in Russian? Ну, вы немножко путаете. Я живу как раз на американском модуле Note 2. I'm living on the US orbital segment in Note 2 overhead. Note 2. Может, тогда вы могли бы объяснить, почему... Работаю, работаю. Да, да. Can you explain why? Ну, потому что так решили два супа. Because two mission control centers decided or made a decision that I should live on board the ISS on the US orbital segment. This is exactly the same crew quarters where I lived five years ago, so it feels like home. But I'm working on the Russian segment most of the time with my Russian colleagues. 
Yeah, Jonathan, there, there's, um, so there's six crew quarters on the space station, and four of them are in node, node two, and there's six of us, so one of the cosmonauts generally sleeps in node two, along with the three other U.S. OS crew members, two of which are Americans right now, and one is Japanese. Understood. Thanks. Uh, Mikael, uh, Scott, uh, one last question for you. You and Chell have an upcoming spacewalk that's, you know, we're currently scheduled for the end of October. Uh, how are you feeling about this as, uh, as we, we come toward that date, and how are you preparing? I, uh, you know, I feel really good about it. I'm, uh, I'm excited about it. It's something I've never done before. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the longer you've been up here, um, probably the more prepared you are to go outside. I mean, just your ability to, to move around and understand, uh, you know, how you need to control your body to do various tasks and how, uh, you know, the, the small amounts of force you use to, to move and position yourself and other things is, uh, you know, something you really get a good sense for over time. And I think it's something that'll help on a, on a spacewalk, but also, you know, the longer you're, you're up here, I think your ability to speak, uh, to think, uh, more clearly is, uh, is improved over time. So, you know, I feel, I feel pretty good about it as far as preparing, you know, we've got some procedures on board so far. I've looked at them, but, uh, you know, we got a lot of work to do in front of us, and uh, we'll be uh, kind of buckling down and studying and preparing the suits and the other hardware here, you know, starting uh, starting pretty soon. Probably, you know, we'll go, you know, in full force uh, once we get once we get uh, rid of HTV. Uh, Mikhail, спасибо большое. Scott, thank you for your time. Uh, be well, and we'll uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you, Jonathan. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event.